Hey beautiful people, so Melbourne is back in stage 3 lockdown and we decided to get baking something other than banana bread. So stay tuned if you want to find out what we made. Okay, so let's get started. So we're gonna put in some flour. For all the um, measurements, you guys can check the link in the bio description box below. So we're gonna crush up some cloves. If you can get them ground already, that'd be helpful. And we need, uh, you know, to just add that to the flour. So what we're doing at this stage is we're just adding all the dry ingredients and some black pepper. You'd be surprised what this does to the actual recipe. We've got some ground cinnamon. And we mix it all up, yeah. Just give it a good mix. Um, it's nothing too serious at this stage. And there we go. Great, so now we're gonna get some golden syrup and we're gonna use about half of this little bottle, which is about 250 grams. And at this stage, I was just using my eyes because, yeah, we like to live life on the edge. So, a good estimate, never hurt anybody. We're gonna add some sugar to this mixture. Any type is okay if you like to use white, if you like to use brown. And we're gonna add our vegetable oil. I also sometimes replace vegetable oil with olive oil. I don't think it's that much of a train smash, but you never know. We're gonna give it a good mix and it's very gluggy at this stage and there's really not much that you can do. Um, so we're definitely going to wait for the next stage because it's, it's going to help with the mixture. Uh, just you wait and see. So we're adding here some boiled water with two uh, teaspoons of bicarbonate of soda. So what the hot water does is it helps to loosen up the syrup and the sugar and it makes it definitely more workable um, than before when it was super gluggy and there'll definitely be a change um, in the texture. So we're gonna add that slowly, not just all at once. And patience is the name of the game. Okay, so we're gonna peel some ginger. This recipe actually uses some fresh ginger. We're gonna use a spoon to peel because that's actually much more easier. And then we are going to blitz the ginger. And we're adding it to that mixture um, right after we've added the hot water. So it helps if you add the ginger straight after so that, you know, it really seeps in the flavor. And we're gonna give that a good mix. Oh, we're also gonna add some ground ginger. Only because I like it to have a really super gingery flavor. So ground and fresh ginger. And now we're gonna mix it all up. I was, I was getting ahead of myself there. There we go, give it a good mix. Okay, so now we're gonna add the dry ingredients to the wet ingredients. And we're gonna do this as slowly as we can. Um, so I'm changing here and I'm getting a whisk because I think it's gonna be a bit more easier for us to mix and just add the flour um, mixture bit by bit and work it.
Okay, now we're gonna add our eggs to the flour mixture um, and see how we go. Just mix that in. Oops, mix it, mix it, mix it, mix it. Okay, so we put the batter in the prepared tin and we bake till done. Okay, so we've baked it, we've checked that it's done and voila. And we're just gonna loosen the edges. If we had lined the tin, this process might have been a bit more quicker and simpler, but no harm done because we did oil it pretty well. Um, but you know, there's definitely no harm in trying to line the tin. So here we go. And there we have it. So this recipe actually doesn't use any molasses, which doesn't make it, you know, as dark as other cakes. Um, but I do find that the fresh ginger does give it a little something extra. The cake is super fragrant and super delicious. And I would be interested to see, um, you know, the difference in the texture and everything if I actually um, use some of the other traditional ingredients. Um, so this didn't have any nutmeg and it didn't have any of the molasses. But anyway, it was super delicious, super moist, and I hope you guys enjoy.